Okay, well this is kind of tricky to explain, but we're going to take a stab at it. So we have been analyzing To a Wild Rose by Edward McDowell, 1896, using this score transcribed by clothesline in the year 2015. And Edward McDowell's composition is in the key of A, and it sounds like this. It's a piano piece. And it's a famous and very popular piece for piano. As you can see, it's got the, the right hand and the left hand here. And in our analysis of it, which is this, we ended up transcribing it, changing, moving the notes down by five, but it's still the same. But the real reason we did that is because, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change, Part 2 Analysis. In today's episode, we entered, re-entered, by talking about concepts of breadth and depth in musical composition. Uh, but basically, we just jumped on in and continued our analysis of To a Wild Rose, which you just saw in our introduction. In the analysis, we pulled apart the original, which is here, and, and in the following manner. We took the melody line, da 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 da, and kept it up there it's all up here but every time there was some other note in the melody like this half note here we pushed it down into the, the left hand so now we have a single line which we can demonstrate by soloing the single line here and then we pushed all of the chords onto what we call cadence line, which is this. And the reason we did that is we wanted to know what kind of chords are those. And here you see we've annotated it's an ambivalent, ambivalent, ambivalent. And that tells us that this cadence up here is what we call an ambivalent cadence, which basically means it has both rest energy and urge energy combined. So it's ambivalent. And then we did that all the way down, all of these lines from the original on the left. There were a lot of them. For example, there, page 20, line 25, pushed everything down so that we could analyze it. And that was our goal. And our goal in analysis was we think this is a really cool sounding piece, and the chords are rather funky. I mean, they're not, they're not traditional. I mean, they, they have cadences, I mean, dissonances, and... They just sounded cool. And we wanted to know what was McDowell doing. And we discovered to our astonishment that he's using a different kind of a scale. This is the traditional Do, Re, Mi scale. Like, you know, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, etc., etc. Um, and it has a minor major parallel. But there's two notes that are never used in a traditional do re mi scale, these two notes. But, but when we transpose this to look at it as if C was the root, we found out he's using this scale. It's the same darn set of blue and pink notes, but the gray notes are different. He excluded D and F instead of D flat and G flat, which we'll talk about later in another another part but that has fascinated us so we declare this the new heptatonic parallel to c minor major scale whereas this is the traditional heptatonic parallel one in any event finally figuring that out finally figuring that out allowed us to write what the energy story was so the energy story in verse one is urge to float, rest to rest, urge to float, 
rest to rest, etc., etc. And then there's this really uh, dramatic part here, like this. Um, which turns out to be a statens, although we didn't label it as such. Well, it's an indirect cadence. It's tonic, tonic, subdominant, tonic. So an indirect cadence. And then, bam, we're back to all these ambivalences, half urge cadences like that. So urge to float, et cetera, et cetera. In any event, what we're going to do is play this transcribed, annotated version for you, and that should bring us home. So uh, let's also give it a little more volume. Here we go. So what we like about having analyzed this piece is the delight of discovering a new scale by McDowell being used 125 years ago, because we're all about using new scales. Uh, another thing we like is the juxtaposition, because this, I would say, is a very traditional piece, traditional structure versus and all that, but it's not so traditional because there's a lot of interesting changes going on here with these transitions and breaks and whatnot. Th these are our labels up here for what's going on. The original doesn't say boo, it just looks like this. You know, play it. <laughs> looks like a complicated mess of notes, but this for us gives us access to it and we can relate it to how we've been composing and how we've had layers of melody and cadence and here we're called something implied backbone which is the implied backbone is where we finally figured out kind of what the energy story is all these chords are ambivalences but the implied backbone is showing us this is a tonic this is a a, a float it's etc a, a driftance as we like to call it so our ideas for next time are to to make a reference set for this new scale. We, we have a, a set, we have a, a spreadsheet that shows all the chords, 120 chords, and, uh, and then we have a score where you can play the scale up and down and play all the chords. So we don't have that for this new heptatonic parallel scale. So, and we, it, that would allow us to compose in it. Uh, we also have a project interest going now of beginning to transcribe sung melodies from recordings to an annotated music scores and we have some test ditties that we hummed ourselves that we can do that with and we also want to further develop some ideas that we were working on here about depth and breadth and the balance between depth and breadth we like balance of breadth and depth so um, and then the layers we just talked about some are melody and canes and backbone in the middle but then we have parts going across from left to right things that are called extension and development or i guess transition we called it and break kind of like part names so um anyway we would like a shout out to miss cleo who came by and inspired us and we want to make another shout out to the muse scorer online handle clothesline 
whose score for To a Wild Rose they very generously shared on the Muse Score website, which you can see here. Close line, May 19th, 2015. So tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.